This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What's up guys? So here's the thing. I posted a video a couple months ago talking about why I love the Sony a7 III so much. And in that video, I talked about how I typically shoot in HLG2. I used to shoot in S-Log2 for everything because it's the best at handling highlights and getting the most dynamic range. But I also find if you don't nail your exposure, it's pretty easy to ruin the shot. So I had heard good things about HLG, so I decided to try it out. And I've been pretty stoked on it. I've been using it ever since, and it tends to hold up better than S-Log2 with Sony's low bitrate 8-bit codec. I don't want this to be an HLG versus S-Log debate, but I will show some side-by-side -side examples of why I still prefer to shoot an HLG 2 over S-Log 2. Essentially, HLG is designed for broadcast-ready HDR. It's not really supposed to be good for grading, but I find it super easy and nice to work with. And for people that aren't experienced with color grading, it's easier to grade and has pretty decent dynamic range compared to any other profile. So I just quickly want to jump into Premiere here and show you guys how I color grade HLG2. I would say this image is perfectly exposed. I was probably at zero on my exposure meter. Um, you can even be a little bit over at like 0.7 or even one stop and not have too many issues. You can even be under a little bit and it's pretty easy to recover that. So I'm going to quickly go into color here and I have my luminance waveform on the left here and my RGB parade. And the first thing I typically do is I adjust my black levels, which I guess I already did here. And you can see we can bring it down here right where it starts to touch. You can see this is starting to clip the black somewhere. So it's probably this guy right here who's in the shadows. Um, these shadows are still fine. And we can actually bring these down to make them a little bit darker. And then also add a little bit more contrast to make them punchier. And then typically what I do with my saturation is I add just 20. So 120. And uh, we still have tons of room to go in the exposure here as far as highlights. The highlights are way under. So we can bump up our exposure here. Now, if you're looking at this on an HDR monitor, you can go even higher. But since we're looking at this on a standard dynamic range monitor, and most of us have that, um, we're going to leave my exposure value set here for that. So this is for a Rec. 709. And we got tons of room. We could basically crank this exposure like probably one full stop. Nope, I can still go even more. So one and a half stops before things start clipping. I don't think anything's really clipping yet. Maybe a little bit up in here. But I'm going to leave it where it was at, just a little bit over here. And I would say that that's pretty much the perfect graded image and I didn't really do much. Look at the little settings I changed here. Yes, you can retain better highlights in S-Log and get the max dynamic range out of your image, but the camera is still recording an 8-bit file and if you aren't using an external recorder, it's only recording 100 megabits per second, 420, so pushing that image super far is going to result in banding macro blocking, especially in the shadows, which I honestly don't see happen very often in HLG. And I'm mainly just talking about Sony Alpha cameras, I'm not talking about the cinema cameras, because you can record in way higher bit rates on those cameras. So in saying this, I know HLG is not a color space, but there's way more to it that I'm not qualified to talk about. So let's get Gerald Undone in here and uh, get him to explain what's going on. Hey Lee, so HLG, as the name suggests, is a hybrid curve for capturing your signal values. The bottom half of the curve is the same as a regular SDR gamma curve and thus is compatible with SDR displays. But the top half switches over to a log curve, which is much better at retaining highlight information. And this is why it's used for HDR content conventionally, because HDR requires much brighter whites with more tonal variations in that upper range. To compare it a bit more crudely to the Sony cameras, it'd be like shooting with the movie profile for your shadows and S-Log2 for your highlights. Now, of course, it's not as good as that. It's noisier than movie and doesn't capture as much as S-Log, because usually anything that does two things does both worse, but it is very good at being versatile. Generally speaking, you're still going to get better dynamic range with the true log profile if your sensor is able to capture it. But with many cameras, where the dynamic range is already limited to less than 12 stops, you can get equal dynamic range from HLG with a cleaner, more usable image right off the card. However, it's still going to be noisier than your typical standard gamma curves because HLG opted to achieve some of the dynamic range by bypassing the linear portion you'd find in standard Rec. 709. For those that aren't familiar with all this curves talk, think of it this way. If each increase in brightness took you one bucket to capture, it would take you 10 buckets to capture 10 steps of brightness. That's linear. But what if as things got brighter, you could squeeze more and more steps into each bucket? So if your first bucket had two steps, your second would have four steps, and your third would have eight. That would be a log curve. But if you mix those ideas together, you'd have a hybrid log gamma, where your first five buckets are filled evenly, but your last five buckets are more densely packed. 
Now, gamma doesn't work as cleanly as this bucket analogy because gamma is actually a non-linear operation, but we can still extract some practical considerations for you as a video shooter. One, you have more exposure headroom and you should consider using it when possible if noise is a concern. Two, you'll have to convert from Rec 2020 or Rec 2100 to Rec 709. The Sony cameras allow you to shoot with Rec 709 color, which makes this easier, but you'll still need to linearize that curve and post to make the contrast and midtones look right. And three, the shots might look a little weird if you have a client proofing straight out of camera footage. Those aspects often lead to comments from people suggesting that you shouldn't use HLG because it's for HDR. And they're right, it was designed as an HDR delivery standard, and if you record with a device like the Atomos, you have access to HDR options that you wouldn't with a standard profile. But that doesn't mean it can't be used for SDR or Rec. 709 delivery, you just have to transform it to accomplish that. S-Log2 isn't meant to be used for SDR delivery either, it too has to be corrected to be consumed. But I'll toss this back to you, Lee, so that you can cover how you like to handle that correction. So in the HLG2 on my camera, I leave it at BT2020. Uh, the only setting I change is I drop saturation to negative one. But when I come into Premiere, I work in Rec. 709. And you could be asking me, why wouldn't you change it to Rec. 709 on the camera? And I find that I actually like the color of BT2020, the way it outputs and the way that Premiere converts it into Rec. 709. What if you don't have the exposure set perfectly? What if you go to an image like this where it was a little bit too dark? And you can see here that our luminance is way under. We're at like 60 IRE when we could be way up at 100. So this is what it's like to recover something that's underexposed. And this is where something like S-Log2 would kind of fall apart. So I'm gonna bump this up, keep bringing this up. Right around there our blacks we can bring our blacks down a little bring the shadows down a little bring some contrast into it and then add a little bit more saturation and that image looks good I would say it's a little bit too warm maybe the thing is you can go anywhere with it I'm gonna leave it around there the other thing is too, you can open the color wheels up and change how much saturation and the type of color that's in the shadows. That's 2.3 stops that were underexposed that we had to correct for. And I still even have a little bit more room here if I want to go even more. And you can see the image isn't falling apart. It looks really good still. Okay, so I have a lot of examples of underexposed stuff. So here's another shot that's underexposed. We can bump that up two stops. You can see we're starting to clip some highlights and that's probably these lights back here. So I can bring it back down just a little bit. Bring our blacks down till they start to touch zero. Bring the shadows down a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually add some more contrast to this. And then I would say I'm a little bit too warm so we can cool it off just a little bit and add that saturation in. Now I would say I look a little too orange and it's something I can fix with our highlights and midtones. So I might bring it down to cooler. My shadows, we can warm them up a little. Kind of like something like that. We can boost our midtones a bit more and bring those shadows down. And you can see we have no noise in this shot. And I was probably at 3200 ISO for this stuff. And I know that a scenario like this, I wouldn't want to use S-Log2. I'll show you how much we came from, so I'll put this back to zero. Okay, just because I couldn't find it, I wanted to actually overexpose an image. So I did a test here where I overexposed by two stops. In the actual waveform on my Ninja 5 monitor, I had it set to the HLG2 profile, and I could see that this wasn't quite overexposed yet, but it's obviously gonna make an overexposed image for a non-HDR monitor. So if you look at this, that looks gone. The image is completely destroyed. If you're on an HDR monitor, you might be able to see this, I'm not sure. But if we actually go into here, go to our color settings, I wanna show you how much we can actually save out of these highlights. So I'm just gonna move this over a bit so you get a bigger window. As you can see, we're clipping here quite a bit. But if this was an NHLG profile, you can see we actually have a little bit more headroom here, but because I don't have a HDR monitor right now, you can't really see that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually bring the exposure down. And that's crazy. You can see all the detail on my forehead and everything now. And uh, we brought that down two stops, basically 2.2 stops. I can bring the highlights down just a little bit. 
can boost our shadows up just a little bit, add our contrast back in. And now on our blacks, we have a little bit more room to go here so we can bring our blacks down. And then to really get those punchy shadows, I actually take it out of the color wheels and bring that down here. And now we have a little bit more room to bring our mid-tones up. And I'm seeing it's kind of clipping. It's a little bit clipping here on my forehead, so you can actually bring that back down just a little bit more. It's not really clipping there anymore. We can add our saturation in. And we can even add more contrast if we wanted to. We can play with this color here. I, I actually don't hate the color, um, but it is really putting a lot of green and blues into the shadows, which is something different that you don't really get with other picture profiles. And I want to show you what happens when we actually use S log as well. But as you can see here, this I'll toggle this on and off. It's crazy how much detail is actually in those highlights still. So here's a shot that's actually in S log two. I put my LED on it here and this corrected for everything. But it's actually interesting to see, I feel like the details and the highlights are gone. And you can see that this looks a little bit more purpley blue versus the green blue that's in HLG2. Some may say this is more truer to actually what it would look like. And this looks more like it has some kind of LUT on top of it. But I actually really like the skin tones and the colors and everything in this versus S-Log2. Like I said, I tend to prefer the HLG image and the colors from HLG. So in this test, I want to show underexposed S-Log2 and then correcting for it at a high ISO. This is around 3200. And then HLG2 also underexposed and then correcting for that and showing the noise level. So I'm going to punch in here to 400%. You can see the color noise and how noisy it is in S-Log2. And then when we jump to HLG2, there's hardly any noise at all. So how's social distancing going? Are you getting a little stir crazy with all that free time? I honestly think it's the best time right now to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. With Skillshare's online classes, what you find just might surprise you and inspire you. For those of you that don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. There are lots of amazing classes related to photography and filmmaking, just like Moody Food Photography with Sean Dalton, Portrait Photography Working with Natural Light with Benjamin Heath, Cinematic Wedding Films with Maddie Hapoya. There's tons of classes that'll help you learn from the ground up with an easy step-by-step -step layout, kind of like chapters in a book. This way, Skillshare can fit your schedule and your skill level. Skillshare is not just for beginners, it's also for real world working creative professionals as well. I just finished up a class on personal branding, crafting your social media presence with Kate Ahrens, and I think it's something that you guys would also be interested in. Most classes are under 60 minutes and include a combination of video lessons as well as a class project. This way you can go out and use your new skills in the real world. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when you're comparing it to the pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. So the first thousand people that click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership. So explore your creativity and learn something new this year. All right, so just to recap, I've been shooting the majority of my YouTube videos in HLG2 for the last year and a half. I'm currently shooting this talking head right now in HLG2. I realize it's not a color space and it's technically not made for grading, but it's super easy to work with and you get a really nice image with little effort. I actually really love the skin tones and I really love the color as well. It's kind of less Sony looking. HLG is also more forgiving if you overexpose or underexpose because it doesn't really fall apart that easy compared to other profiles. And I was actually really surprised at the highlight detail that it saved when overexposed, you know, one and a half to two stops. And uh, you can also shoot at ISO 100 versus ISO 800 and S-Log2. And that's gonna help with noise. Anyway, those are my reasons why I shoot in HLG2. I don't know if I necessarily recommend it to everyone, uh, but you know, if we all had HDR displays, it wouldn't really make a difference. And I think it would make way more sense to shoot in. But personally, I really like it. I think it's the best profile setting to shoot video in. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Don't forget to wash your hands. I'll see you guys in the next one. Codec, codec, codec. S-Log debate, debate. <laughs> Slog debate, debate. Why do I keep saying debate? Why I still prefer it.